This is max level EDC. And today I want to talk about an alternative to carrying a all in one multi-tool, like something like the Leatherman signal. Now I carry things like this or like the Leatherman free P2 or, you know, the Leatherman curl. And there's many other options as well. But lately I've been wondering what if we carried a pocket knife or even just you know a folding knife that's just better as a folding knife and then maybe we instead assemble the components that make up a multi-tool like i've been carrying this as my dedicated wallet which has a pry tool and a screwdriver and a scissor and a tweezer and all of this other stuff even a pen and i what makes me wonder why am i carrying so much so today I want to talk about alternatives, things that you could actually carry to specifically cover the plier part of these multi-tools. So let's go ahead and get to it. Now I think for most people, what you're seeing in front of you is kind of a little bit more familiar than maybe carrying something like the Leatherman Signal. Something this small is also gonna be much, much lighter. So, you know, this is basically a compact with Phillips that I've modified, and this weighs about three ounces. So it's significantly lighter than many of the larger multi-tools that are out there. And there's different designs and different styles of pocket knives out there, whether it's the K series, the T series from Leatherman, and so on. And then there's also a plenty plenty enough people out there who prefer no pocket knife at all and instead they prefer a folding knife well this kind of applies to you as well if you want to for a day add a pair of pliers i think it'd be worth noting which ones you can add to your collection easily or just stick straight into your pocket so now that we've gotten this out of the way let's go right into what actually substitutes for a leatherman style plier head here we have four different styles of combination pliers. Now this is the same philosophy that exists in something like a Leatherman, where you have a cutter, you have a section for holding nuts, and then you have a fine section at the end for holding things and twisting and getting into small spaces. So many of the pliers you see here are going to simulate that process. And some of them are new discoveries and some of them have been in my collection for a long time. So starting with the one that I think is the most comparable one-to-one, -one, that is this one. This is a Nipix combination plier, model number 0821145. So these are just under six inches, about five and a half inches. And as you can see, you have exactly the same combination. You have the grabbing section in the front, you have a section for nuts, and of course you have these big cutting arms. One of the big advantage here as a dedicated implement is that these are forged out of carbon steel. So these are going to be obscenely strong, obscenely strong. They weigh about three ounces. Well, actually let's check exactly how much they weigh. All right, so they weigh 121 grams or about four ounces. Okay, I was actually glad I checked. So four ounces for that. So something like the Leatherman Signal is a relatively light tool as far as multi-tools are concerned, and this is about seven and a half. So you have about half the weight right here in just the pliers alone. And that makes sense. When you think about the arms and everything that goes into the pliers, yeah, that kind of makes sense. Even something like the Curl, seven ounces, that's about right. More than half of it is, is invested in the plier. Now there's other ones as well that have similar combinations. And I just found these. These are actually made by Klein. I'm sorry, not Klein. This is made by Channel Lock. And I didn't know this till recently, but they make a four and a half inch virgin version of their slip joint pliers. And I gotta say, I'm really impressed. There is almost no play in these, just enough to basically do the shift and it has cutters grabbing end, and they actually come to a very nice uh, point here. So I'm actually kind of impressed. This is a decent option, and actually, in many ways, is probably better for holding 
larger nuts than even a multi-tool would be, even though they are shorter and don't give you as much leverage. So I think that's a, actually a pretty decent option. And these come in well under the $15 range. I think these are 14 bucks. I will put a link to them down in the description. So you could do something like this in your collection and that would definitely work. And because they don't have pointed ends, you can just literally drop these straight in your pocket without anything whatsoever. Now, real quick. So we also have a locking vice grip. Now this is an extreme variant. This is quite heavy. So I know, I'm not sure most people would consider something like this. This is considered a six inch uh, locking vice grip and it is 181 grams or six ounces. So this tool by itself weighs almost as much as a normal multi-tool. But the thing is, is this is forged, once again, forged pliers and frankly, vice grips in and of themselves are quite, quite useful. And I think, and uh, something I wanted to do, maybe you guys uh, have an opinion. I was considering modifying this one to kind of give it a more precise tip for everyday carry and kind of create a toolkit for it around it. You know what I mean? But these have these have wire cutters, they have sections for nuts, and then they have the fine tip section. So once again, very similar. And then the last one is something I just discovered. Now, I wish I had known about these years ago because they are unbelievable. This is by engineer. This is the PZ58. And these are what we call screw pliers. Now look at the, look at the head. You can see what this is designed to do is actually grab the head of a screw and allow you to unscrew something without having a screwdriver. So essentially, as long as the screw itself is exposed, you can use this instead of a screwdriver. And this is cool because it actually has cutters and a section for nuts as well. This might be one of my favorites in recent memory. And as you can see, there's actually a bunch of plastic here that doesn't have a piece of metal. So I'm actually gonna strip this whole thing off. I'm gonna cut it down a little bit more so that I can even fit it more comfortably into um, an organizer that I can carry every day. Cause I'm actually super impressed by this particular plier head. And these came into like $23. I think they're on sale right now. I'll put a link down in the description, but I think this is also a pretty cool option when we're talking about straight up trying to get what we get in a multi-tool plier, right? But that's not the only types that are out there. When you're talking about more specialized pliers, there are so many options. So let's go right into that. Now, for those who have potentially carried a separate plier in their EDC, some of these are going to seem very familiar, like the 5-inch Cobra. This has been a fan favorite for a long time, but there's actually been a whole bunch of additions that have come to light, at least recently, to me. So let's start with what's on the far left. Now this is actually an Irwin vice grip model and I have removed the scales and shortened it down to five inches. I'm actually going to be dipping these in a, a material so I can actually reapply a handle. One cool thing, two things that are different with this versus the Cobra from Nipix, besides the price of $12, is that uh, when you open it, you actually get quite a bit more of an angle without adjusting it, you see? On top of that, there's another thing I discovered with the Irwin that I think is pretty cool. If you look at the ratcheting section, you can actually move it up to the level you're looking for without um, having to press the button. But when it comes to Nipix, if I have it down here, in order for me to go up, I have to actually actively press the button. So you can kind of slide the handle up to kind of get that next notch while it's already around the bolt. So that's really cool. I'll put that aside for now. Now, well, let's let's do uh, the Nipex last. So this is a another one that I found recently, and this is actually made in the USA. This is the four and a half, four two four, um, channel locks. Are they small, man? They are very small. But the, what I love is look at how thin this is. This is a very very light option. In fact, let's take a look and see just how light. We're talking here. So these are 39 grams. And if I were to combine that with something like, let's see, 170, 
or six ounces. That comes out to only six ounces with that combination. That's pretty amazing. Very, very light wrench that you can use and giving you all that multiplying force. Now, I'm just wailing on this, just squeezing as tight as I can. And I don't know, I, I think it'd be very difficult to break, even though they do look kind of flimsy. Being forged, man, very, very strong. Now, these last three are very familiar. They're, of course, the Nubix Cobra, the extra small variant, and the plier wrench, and they all have very different usage. I thought at first that this was just quite literally a smaller version of the Cobra, and that is simply not the case. So I wanna point out why that is not the case right here. So if we're looking down at the top, you could see just how much thinner the far end is. This is much more precise of a tip. Now that obviously it doesn't come with this snakeskin pattern. This was a custom uh, laser job by EDC Outlaw. He does a whole bunch of customized tools. I'll put a link to his stuff down in the description. But right now, the extra small variant is very, very expensive. I think the ones I saw on Amazon were like $60 or something. I, I guess it just the demand is really, really high. And these are about between 37 and 41 by themselves and this is about 45 so these are expensive and so it's nice that we've been able to discover a $12 mod modable variant that is a little bit bigger so it's not quite easy and we also have these smaller variants like this made in the USA channel lock pretty cool um, on top of this of course we have the plier wrench and I think there are just some things that this tool does that no other tool is really gonna substitute for. So what I've used it for, like for instance, I recently uh, bent a pocket clip and instead of twisting it, what I did is I basically need both hands to come together to push the clip down. And so I was able to, without marring anything, because there's no teeth on the plier wrench, I was able to just simply squeeze and get the pocket clip back in the right orientation. I've also used it many times when doing custom Victorinox uh, pocket knives because I can then squeeze the layers together without bending anything in weird angles. And of course it doesn't mar anything. And because the liners are aluminum, it's very, very easy to do that. This is another great option. Now, once again, I remind you that everything you see in this video, all of these items, all of these different wrenches, I will put links to down in the description. And I will continue to collect more because this has become a fascinating uh, category, at least for me. If you have see, see or know of any others that I have not yet mentioned, just let me know. So this is going to be a little bit out there. I don't know anybody who's ever talked about using these as part of an everyday carry, but when I started looking at them a little bit closer, I found that there's a couple of really cool variants that are actually designed for fishing that you could really get benefit for carrying every day. So this is what I had on me when I was a teacher. And man, how many times I reached in somewhere to grab something so I could pull it out, whether it was a, a, a wire or something like that. I think three or four times I had it on me and my, you know, the teacher that I was helping was just in shock that I had this tool with me, <laughs> but then again, I'm weird. Anyway, came in handy and I don't think anything I own could have substituted for exactly this. But so it got me thinking, what other implements like this exist? Turns out there's some pretty cool ones. Check these out. So these are called Dr. Slick. And they're actually designed for fishing. Now, this is the six inch variant. So it I got this one to put into a toolkit because having one in toolkits really useful. But unlike normal variants, it actually has a pair of serrated scissors. So you have serrated scissors, a curved end, and they actually have it in straight form as well. And there's a couple other things as well. I'm not exactly sure what that's for, other than you know, making you have a very bad day. And it also has a flat head at the back, which I think is really interesting. And I think for fishing, this is like for working with those flathead screws on fishing reels and having it be attached to this means it's all in one place. I think that's kind of the concept, but kind of a useful benefit. On top of that, I got a four inch version. So this is a four inch. So let me show you the comparison with these other smaller implements. Four inches, four and a half inches. 
And this thing is really impressive. Um, it's straight because I wanted I wanted to be able to actually fit it into a pouch of some sort. And you can see how much better this would be in certain situations than even a Leatherman plier. Just getting into a small spot to grab something and then being able to lock it in place while you work on it and so on. It's different, completely different from a plier. And maybe you don't need this type of plier. Maybe this will do you. And the cool part is, once again, you have small, oh, focus, small serrations that will let you cut things like string and fabric, etc., etc. So, neat little option and something that I've never seen anybody talk about in the context of everyday carry. But because this is only four inches, you could easily, easily put these into a kit, something that you put in your pocket. And I think that is worth noting. That's gonna be it for today. These are just some ideas, some tools that I have found that I think could easily be substituted in your everyday carry. And unlike a multi-tool like you would get from Leatherman or Gerber or whoever, this is a dedicated implement. These are usually made of forged carbon steel or stainless steel sheets and they are going to be more robust. Now they are going to be a little bit more difficult to carry, just like a fixed blade is a little bit more difficult to carry than a folding knife. It's the same idea. But depending on what you do or depending on what you're trying to accomplish for the day, you might want to consider one of these. So I will put a link to all of them down in the description. And as I said before, if I find new ones, I will add those as well. Thanks again, and we'll talk again soon.